Hello guys, welcome back to Ipma TV and in this video I'm going to be sharing um, uh, tips on how I got admitted to Griffith University for a PhD program without a master's degree and I also got a fully funded scholarship. So sit back and enjoy. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about what it's what is important if you're also trying to get into a PhD program without going through the master's degree um, program in your country, be it Nigeria or anywhere, there are some things you need to do and these things are very, very important. Now, the first thing is you need to have a mentor. You need to have someone who is very, very active in academics, research, you know, someone who is who has been who is well known in the research community. Preferably someone who is also a lecturer in maybe a university you want to go to. And um, I am saying this because it's actually really very important because there are a lot of opportunities that are in these universities like US, UK, Canada, Australia, but people don't really know about them. So if you have someone who is like an insider, who is a mentor to you then it's easy for you to like ask the person or the person to give you these um, uh, updates on stuff like this. I understand how do you go about this. I know it's difficult, but that will be digressing from this video and I'll have to do a separate video on how to get a mentor in um, one of these universities. So um, the second point I want to talk about is develop yourself. You just have to develop yourself because if you have to if you, if you, for you to have a mentor or for you to have someone, the person has to benefit something from you. So it's just like a football now. Why players like Neymar and Messi are so like well known? They could go to any club they want to go to because they have developed themselves so much. Like the clubs know if this guy comes, he's gonna be scoring goals for me. So you also have to do the same thing for yourself. If you are in music, you have to develop yourself. Like learn as many musical instruments you can learn. If you're in the sciences like us learn programming, learn stuff, just try to develop yourself. And if you are interested in the academics, try to write papers, academic papers. Yeah, it really, really helps because that's one of the crazy things you can do here that will make your profile to be like boom, you know. So develop yourself, it's very, very important. Now, another point is you have to um, have a high CGPA in your bachelor's. Like, I can't stress this, as I, I mean, I can't stress it enough. Forget about all this land, school not scam. School, school is not scam, guys. School is not scam. When you come outside Nigeria, you see things going on, you know, no, no, no. School is like top. So you have to take your academics serious. Target four points, like four point, four point five. Even if you can't make a first class, just target four points. If you have a very high CGPA, you could get a PhD scholarship without going through a master's. And it saves you time. You know, it makes you have an outstanding record, you know. Uh, and uh, I think it's important to pay attention to having a very high CGPA. If you can't have a first class, just don't fall below 4.0 because it will give you that image. Because take it or leave it, you are competing with almost the whole world. You are competing. Imagine everybody in your country, a lot of people that want to um, get that offer, people in your continent, Africa, people in Asia, people from China, India, and some of these guys are so good. They are so good. So you have to be different you have to be outstanding for you to get something like this so so i'm not saying if you're not outstanding you can't get it but it really gives you an age so that is why you need to have a high cgpa just try in your bachelor's if you are done with your bachelor's and your um, um cgpa is not that high it doesn't hurt you could just go for a master's degree before coming for a phd yeah that's just my advice you have to go through a master's so before you get a PhD, but if you have a very high CGPA, then I think you could get a PhD offer, scholarship fully funded, without going through a master's. Yeah. So the next point is, you have to constantly be looking for opportunities. Like there are platforms there, like LinkedIn. You have to go to LinkedIn, look for opportunities. People are always posting things on LinkedIn. In fact, I got another scholarship here in Australia, working with um. um I don't want to go into details of um, what I'm working on, but I got a top-up scholarship, um, you know, to the scholarship I already have. 
So it's really interesting, it's really fun, man. And I got this offer because I saw it on LinkedIn. Yeah, someone just posted it. I was like, oh wow, I'm interested. I'm qualified for this. I applied and I got it. So you have to look for opportunities. You go to research gates, they post opportunities there. Then there is also another trick. For example, if you are applying for the, um, you want to go to the US, you can look for people who have grants, like all these um, science foundation. Yeah, there is a website for that. You look for, they post the names of people who have gotten grants. Grant is like money from the government to conduct a particular research. So that is why you need to improve yourself or develop yourself because if you develop yourself to a particular um, level and you have a particular set of skills, if you see someone who has a grant and the grant is related to what you want to do, you could just send the person an email and be like, oh, I'm interested in this. This is what I can offer you. This is what I can do, you know? The person can consider you, but the downside to this is that anybody who applies for a grant already has a plan. So most of the professors, you know, I've been here for a while and I know how the system works. Like, not fully. I'm still getting to know how the system works. But I know that for people who apply for grants, most of them, they already have plans. But not all of them. So some of them are still looking for students. So you could be lucky that you apply to someone who needs a student, a PhD student, and you show you have the skills. That is it. You get your scholarship, you get your admission. So um, another point I want to raise is that you have to write cold emails to professors. And there is a format for this. You don't just write, hello, this, how is your family? People don't have time here. The professors have seen here. In fact, once you go to the office, emails will just be dropping. Bam, 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 bam. People from here, people from here, people from here. These are looking for mentorship program. These are looking for scholarships, this is looking for admission. So for them to read your, your this thing, you have to have a very, very good subject, like something catchy, something catchy. So the person will just, bam, okay, let me read this. So you have to, there is a format to do this, and I will be doing this in uh, a later video because I want this video to be as short as possible. So, learn to write code emails to professors, learn to write code emails to um, people who are conducting research in the country you want to go to. And also try to spread your tentacles. Don't be like, oh, it must be Australia. Oh, it must be Canada. No, it doesn't have to be that way. You could go anywhere, even if it's Germany, even if it's Canada, even if it's Australia, even if it's just like apply, 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 apply. Because yeah, that's it. The more applications you have, the higher your chances of getting something. So that is also what I did. And I also hope and I know that you could also get this kind of offer if you follow these examples or these um, things that I've dropped. So, um, thank you so much guys for watching my video. The love has been overwhelming. Thank you so much for all the subscribers. All the subscribers, I really am grateful. And please, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel. It's just for you to support. And uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.